Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So in the previous episode, I showed an unboxing of a packet I received uh, that contains several items, and one of them was this uh, tuner, the MFJ uh, Travel Tuner uh, Model 902. So this is, as you can see, a pretty small unit. It's rated for a maximum of 150 watts. Uh, it's very nice, it's metallic, uh, it feels uh, very good, it's relatively heavy, not, not so much, but it, it feels good. Um, yeah, so this is the front panel, it has uh, three knobs. Um, uh, on the back there are two connectors, these are M-type connectors, but I, I plug some uh, BNC adapters, as you can see. There is a ground uh, connector for properly ground uh, these uh, units, since it is metallic. And there is a switch that allows you to bypass or to tune uh, um, the unit. Right. And um, yeah, so uh, I already removed the screws. So there are um, three screws here and three screws here. So when you open it, uh, it's, uh, it's like that. So let me show you. Uh, it's pretty nice. So basically there are two capacitors uh, associated with these knobs and you can regulate the capacitance by you know moving the plates here so uh, at this point where they are completely overlapped like at this moment uh, the capacitance is maximal and indeed uh, the knob uh, say so and uh, when uh, we uh, put them on opposite directions like this uh, the capacitance is minimal as you can see and the same for that one so maximal and minimal and here instead, you regulate uh, an inductor that has uh, several uh, points that are connected uh, uh, moving these knobs. So uh, electrically speaking, this is, uh, uh, um, it looks like this. Uh, and um, so let me, let me show you. It's basically this type of uh, tuners are called the T networks uh, because uh, um, yeah, the, the connection will look like this as a T. So basically the signal comes from the transmitter here and it goes through these capacitors and here is the output, the antenna. But there is this uh, shunt inductor, okay? So effectively what this is, is um, it's a high pass filter. If the frequency is high, uh, it just goes through the capacitors. The capacitors have very little impedance uh, at high frequencies and um, the inductor instead is a high impedance at high frequencies. So for high frequencies, this is just uh, a pass. And for low frequencies instead, uh, uh, low frequencies will have some hard time passing this first capacitor, and then we, they will be completely sucked by this uh, inductor, which is uh, low impedance for, for low frequencies. And indeed, yeah, this is the Wikipedia page for high pass filters, and you can see this uh, configuration here. So yeah, effectively, uh, this is uh, a high pass filter that you can regulate uh, using the knobs. But of course, you, the main purpose of this is uh, to match uh, to match antennas, right? And so let me show you how this works uh, with the help of uh, uh, my Nano VNA, which I'm going to connect here as a transmitter. And, um, at the moment, there is nothing connected to the antenna. But still, I want to show you this point, so let me zoom a little bit. Um, so, at the moment, as you can see um, here, there is nothing connected to the antenna port, okay? Nevertheless, the tuner is managing to, to kind of uh, tune this, uh, uh, this open circuit anyway. So let me play a little bit to see. Yeah, as you can see, here we are kind of... Uh, tuning very nicely and doing this uh, very quickly on the on the moment but we have at uh, the frequency uh, which is here uh, as you can see we have uh, basically 1.06 SWR so let me see if I can focus a little bit yeah 1.2 uh, at the moment um, uh, yeah, it's kind of depends a little bit. Uh, well, anyway, it's uh, almost uh, tuning perfectly a uh, completely open circuit. So this is a point about these tuners. They are not going to do magic. Of course, uh, uh, you know, this uh, open circuit is not a good antenna. Still, the SWR is low. 
okay so the, the point of this is really protecting the transmitter and the matching uh, the impedances but it's not going to improve the performance of transmission uh, in any ways okay so my goal uh, with this uh, with this um, tuner i haven't tried yet uh, but uh, is uh, to tune a long wire okay my objective uh, is uh, to have a long wire tuned for uh, 20 meters so the 14 megahertz band because this is the most active for long transmissions and stuff like that so that's that's what i would like to to do with this that's the reason i, I bought it and so let me just try you uh, an example of an interesting uh, tuning so here i have um, um, a resistor decade it's something i uh, i think uh, I showed you this in two episodes ago or two or three episodes ago. Basically, I can, um, by moving these jumpers, uh, uh, basically uh, regulate uh, the resistance of this. Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to, to focus. I'm sorry. Anyway, at the moment, this is uh, configured to be 1177 ohm. Okay, this is uh, uh, the configuration that I have at the moment. And uh, it's uh, connected, uh, the resistor is connected to this uh, BNC cable. And if I connect the uh, BNC cable to the nano VNA, we can see what is the response. Uh, and as you would expect, uh, it's horrible. So there's the WR is over the top, it says 21. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is not, uh, for some reason, this is not focusing, but Yeah, 21, as you can see over there, the yellow, the yellow information. Uh, right, so let me see if I can actually tune this. Uh, I'm interested in tuning something with a high impedance because uh, usually, uh, mm -hmm, let's see if I can deal with this uh, terrible autofocus of this camera. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know what. I could do maybe up at the light or something. Yeah, maybe maybe slightly better. And uh, anyway, yeah, let me try to see if I can uh, if I can tune uh, this unit. Um, so this also shows uh, the procedure that is basically recommended in the manual. So here I have the nano VNA. Um, so let me uh, connect it. Uh, to uh, the transmitter port here of the tuner, uh, this way. So the nano VNA is going to be our transmitter and it can also measure the SWR, okay? So that's the point of it. And um, as you can see at the moment, it's, uh, it's tuning very well this, um, this frequency, which is uh, uh, about, uh, um, how much is it? It's five megahertz. But suppose I want to, uh, let's say my goal I said was to tune uh, the uh, 40 megahertz band. So let me see. Okay, as you can see there is 14 and something. So I will leave, um, I'm going to zoom a little bit more so you can see what happens on, uh, on the SWR. And I'm going to play a little bit with uh, these uh, inductances, okay? So let me try... Uh, so the general idea is that the higher the capacitance is better and the lower the inductance is better, okay? Uh, this is because power losses uh, happens at the level of the inductor. The capacitors do not have many losses or more like ideal components. So I'm going to reduce a little bit uh, uh, the inductor. And as you can see, we are moving the SWR towards where we want it. So this point here. Uh, 40 megahertz so let me try a little bit more maybe a little bit more okay so now the inductance is uh, actually is very small is the third uh, smallest that we have and so let's see if i if i can play a little bit with the inductors to try to get a good response so i'm going to lower this a bit Really, the goal uh, is not just to look at uh, this SWR. The goal is to try to move the um, here, the complex impedance, this is the Smith chart, uh, toward uh, the center of the graph, where it's going to be uh, precisely 50 ohm, okay? 
So the SWR is just a consequence of trying to get uh, um, to the center. And as you can see, if I play with this um, capacitor here in one direction, I'm basically enlarging this circle and at the same time uh, moving uh, uh, in the clockwise direction over it. So let me show you again. I'm increasing the circle and as you can see the green dot is moving to the right clockwise, okay? So I, okay. And when I instead I play with this other uh, capacitor, let's say uh, I'm moving towards clockwise, but I'm not uh, dramatically changing the side of this circle, okay? Yeah, so let me see what we can do about that. So let's try. Okay, so my goal now was to have uh, uh, the circle going very close to the to the center and now let me play with the other capacitor and as you can see I'm trying to rotate towards the center ah but I already reached the maximum capacitance okay so I cannot use this trick too much so I'm going to instead play as you can see it's really a trial and error sort of thing um, so maybe I can try to do this mm -hmm. Doesn't seem I'm too successful for the moment. Yeah, you need to be patient. This is, uh, I mean, technically one could, uh, do the math here. Oh, okay. I think we made some progress. Okay. Ah, we are again at the maximum. So I'm not sure. So let me try perhaps, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure in this DU live is not super exciting, I guess, but uh, um, no, okay, this approach is not really uh, working. So let me try another strategy. I'm going to increase. Okay, so I think I will assign here. So perhaps I, I need to use another uh, inductor value and start playing again. So let's put the capacitor on half and half and we start again from there. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, maybe I start uh, reducing it a little bit. Oh yes, okay, we are going, all right. This looks uh, pretty good, so I'm going to stay there. Now increase this a little bit. And there we go. So we finally managed to tune this. So now we have uh, 56 ohm and 1.20 uh, SWR. So now playing a little bit with the details I can, as you can imagine, uh, improve the situation. Um, no, the other way. Anyway, this is uh, probably not so interesting to, to show uh, live here, but as you can imagine, well, I'm doing a pretty terrible job. Okay, 1.22, um, let me see, well anyway, so we stop here for the moment, but as you can see we managed to, to get 1.20 uh, uh, of uh, SWR and uh, the complex impedance of 59 ohm. Uh, before I tried, uh, I, unfortunately I didn't save the values, but I got 1.05 SWR. So with patience, uh, you, you can use this uh, to tune, uh, you know, basically something with a very high impedance like a long wire. So I will try, I will try in, um, probably in the very close future to tune a long wire to see what happens. And uh, I will uh, perhaps add a comment below to, to uh, well, to just confirm that I was successful on this. Okay, I hope this was uh, interesting for you. Ah, yes, uh, one last thing. This, uh, uh, this unit is, as you can see uh, here, let me activate this, uh, is unfortunately very expensive. Okay, so it's uh, $140. And um, uh, 
so I don't know. Personally, I think I'm very happy I bought this uh, uh, second hand. Uh, I would not suggest to invest. Uh, I mean, just does it, it feels very nice. Uh, it's metal. It feels sturdy and quite heavy. So it feels good. But in my opinion, one hundred and eighty dollars is way too much. And um, yeah, I paid for about uh, seventy euros for the box that I unboxed uh, last time. Contain many things, including this. So yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's probably better to buy it for, for less on the second-hand market. Okay, that's all uh, for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.